All right, captivity. 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 So we, when we think of captivity, we think of Israel with our Judah going into captivity. <coughs> um, and there is uh, a, a major truth connected with that. But in 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 4 and 5, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Not just mighty from God, through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity. This is the Lord. This is what he's wanting to do. He's wanting to bring us into captivity. You know, we're wanting to fight it, right? That's what Israel did. That's what Judah did. They fought the captivity. And... Uh, <clears throat> and they did it because they had imaginations and high things that said, we shouldn't go into captivity, we shouldn't be in trouble, we shouldn't da 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 we shouldn't go through bad things, we're with God, we're God's people. You know, there, there might be an advantage when I do share the regular, to shut that, because those cars are, are yeah, noisy. I know, because this word is perfect. <clears throat> I agree. So the so we we say well you can you can use carnal weapons or you can use his weapons, <clears throat> but in truth it's how the weapons are being used. Judah was using their weapons to fight captivity. They were trying to fight the captivity. That's carnal weapons. They were trying to fight going into captivity. They were trying to maintain the status quo of their existence in Israel. They didn't want to move into Christ. They didn't want to move into the nature of the Lord. They wanted to be a happy church, you know what I'm saying? A happy group. And they wanted their temple and they wanted everything that is, <coughs> that is um, religious without any problems, okay? So they're using their, their weapons, and um, those weapons are uh, carnal. What's it say? Uh, it, it, it's uh, just imaginations in the eyes of the Lord. It's not the mind of Christ. Think of the difference between imaginations and the mind of Christ. Right? That's a big contrast. That's... So, so it's like uh, our imaginations are that we, we are going to have an existence that is devoid of problems, mm. you know, that is, um, and yet, um, uh, and yet the Lord gives us weapons. They are the weapons of our warfare mm. in captivity, mm. not to avoid it in captivity and so <clears throat> he says casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself okay so there you have it you have you have an attitude that says um you know uh and there's a general attitude that goes along with that and the general attitude is that the spiritual people don't go through stuff mm. Right? Mm -hmm. The spiritual people don't. They're okay. They're, um, they're doing well in the Lord. So, um, for example, when Ann sat down beside me, first thing she did was take my hand and say, well, how have things been with you? And I said, well, sometimes they're really good, sometimes they're really bad, and sometimes they're just average. And she said, well, I guess that's just life, isn't it? <clears throat> we, when you do that among Christians, uh, for example, I could have said back to her, <clears throat> oh, the church is doing great. Everything, there's no problems. Everything's just really wonderful. We're just moving in the Lord. That's a common response by many Christians, especially pastors. Um, <clears throat> you know, family life is perfect, da 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 da. And I'm going, well, sometimes it's good, <laughs> and sometimes, you know. 
because that's the truth and that's the way it is for everybody. Everybody has those kind of things. And you have your up times and your down times. But, um, <clears throat> and what's funny is this, this goes right along with what I was going to share today, but I wasn't planning on sharing this exact scripture, you know. Um, so I may bleed over into it as we go. <clears throat> um, but, but the problem from the very beginning is these imaginations. Okay, what imaginations? Well, it says right there, high things, things that exalt you, itself exalts itself. That's not the Godhead. And, and it's totally opposite. It's an imagination. And it's not a reality in God. And it's not a reality in life either. But, um, uh, but life has made it that one thing, that thing of I have to be exalted. I have to be higher. I have to, you know, I can't I can't just have a lot of likes on Facebook. I have to be on American Idol. You know what I mean? I can't just be, you know, I can't just have an Instagram account. I have to show all kind of stuff that I do and whatever. <clears throat> and uh, I read an article not too long ago, and it was these peop this uh, girl that was uh, at the swimming pool, and this mom came in uh, with her uh, daughter. And she was a young daughter, and um, and she came in and she uh, set out all these toys, these swim toys and all this stuff, and uh, and they were dressed alike in their swimsuit and everything. And she set up a little tripod and she set up a camera, and she got down on her knees and, and they took pictures like that and then they sat on that moved the camera thing and sat on the edge and splashed the water and they took videos of that and they did all of this stuff and then while the mom was doing checking some things and doing some stuff after she'd gotten everything she stuck the baby or young daughter in a tube thing where she just floated and she was floating away and the little girl Mom, you know, it's not videotaping now. And uh, she's over there trying to get her Instagram account up and going good, uploaded. And when she, she uh, finished, she went out and got the daughter, pulled her out, <coughs> packed up and left. And the girl that was watching the whole thing wrote the article and said, you know, this is how we live. This, we present this life of everything's perfect and my kids and all she didn't give the kid a chance to play with the toys she brought <laughs> she just showed them as evidence that you know this was a really fun family thing and no reality and so the so she presents her life as um everything you know that it's um, um uh, a high thing mm -hmm. it's a uh, an exalted thing compared to you know and and other people uh, you've heard these stories, but other people go on and read somebody's Facebook thing or see what it is and or Instagram and see all this stuff and they get depressed because their life is not like that. Okay, life isn't like that. That's not real life. And, and, and if she went somewhere else with another set of stuff, you know, to make it look like, you know, they're having this great life, then, then the whole thing is fake. Um, and, uh, and yet everybody believes that that's how their life is. And if everybody does it on Facebook and Instagram and all this stuff, then everybody thinks that's the way life is. And it's not. So <clears throat> this literally wants us to work with the Lord, mm -hmm. to cast mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. these imaginations, yeah. you know. And, you know, you read in, uh, let's see if I can look it up real quick. Uh, what is it, Romans 12? Uh, this is Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Well, let's see, that's not, uh, that's not where I'm going. I'm going to thing. Um, 15 is 
one, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. Okay, so, <laughs> so what's gone before this is that in chapter 14 and 13, what's gone before this is particularly 14. We don't want to be with people that would go and eat feast offered to idols or something like that. Uh, we're deeper, we're smarter, we're more holy, uh, and they're, they're denigrating the people who did. And, they're, and so Paul is saying, well, they're weak and you're strong. Okay, so he's going, so, so he's saying, but it doesn't, it's not about weak or strong, it's about the nature of Christ and how you treat one another. And that's, the, that, that's his approach in chapter 14. Then he gets in 15 and he starts with, okay, you that are strong, mm -hmm. you guys that are so spiritual, you ought to be bearing the infirmities, this is Christ, and he's, you ought to be bearing the infirmities of those weak people, see, because you're so strong. Now he knows they're the weak ones, you know what I mean? They're the weak ones. And these others are trusting the Lord, they're still with the Lord. <clears throat> and so, um, and not and not to please yourselves. Is that perfect or what? You shouldn't be pleasing yourself. You shouldn't. You're living in an exalted in imaginations. You're trying to. Uh, you're you're thinking in terms of high things, and you're one of them. Um, so, um, and then he uses the example. Um, uh, let, well, it says, let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. All right, so maybe, maybe the example of the Lord saying, or the example of the first two commandments is uh, love, love God, love your neighbor. But what if it really came down to not pleasing yourself, but pleasing them, because that's what this is. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. Mm -hmm. So it's like, um, see, we go, well, I love my neighbor. You don't even, we don't even know our neighbors, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, it's so ridiculous. But there's, the, there's this spirit within it, and that spirit is to love means to not put yourself first. And to please means love is at work in you mm -hmm. to please and to bless someone else. Mm -hmm. So, um, for even Christ pleased not himself. Mm -hmm. That's the next line. Amen. See? And, and so Jesus, and, and he's going to talk about um, the cross now. He's, <laughs> he's going to use the cross as an example. He's not just saying Jesus, okay? It sounds mm -hmm. like it to this point, but... For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. Okay, so he's, he's saying, <clears throat> we're not just going by um, Jesus of Nazareth. We're going by Christ crucified. That's the example of life. You know, that's the example. You see that in, uh, I, you know, I get them mixed up every night. First Peter, Second Peter. One or the other where um, he starts talking about um, we should follow his example, you know. And the example is how he laid down his life. I mean, went into death for us. And that's a powerful thing because he's saying this is your life example. It's death. <laughs> I mean, because he could have said, I mean, and what we would have thought he would say is that we, you should follow his example where he went around and he blessed people and he healed and did all this stuff. But he's saying, this, here's your example of Jesus. It's your life example. Death. <laughs> you know. So, <clears throat> let's see here. I... Okay, so um, uh, <clears throat> the 
I love this. <laughs> Gosh, I love this. Back in, in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 10. <clears throat> okay, so the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. <clears throat> okay. Um, they're not carnal. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We totally misread that. We totally misread that. We, we understand the carnal somewhat. <clears throat> Not really. Um, well, we really don't. But we certainly don't understand but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Because here's the deal. So Israel, Judah, is about to go into captivity. And they are, they are fighting with all the different weapons they have to keep Jerusalem from falling and from them going into captivity. Okay, <clears throat> and um, but uh, when they go into captivity, those that were with the Lord, they're using mighty weapons that are pulling down the strongholds within themselves, mm -hmm. with also will will break chains out mm -hmm. here. But it is saying you can be in captivity and pull down your own strongholds because that's really that it's talking to them about their situation they're saying you know you're trying to deal with strongholds out there that you're calling strongholds and i'm saying that you don't have something that's mighty through god you're trying to use carnal weapons to stop the enemy wow and and this is what is mighty through god you can pull down those strongholds in you and you can live in the midst of that and bring forth Christ. Yes. <clears throat> so then that's when it goes into, you know, casting down imaginations. And, and you know, okay, so let's look at it today. Um, in our age, <clears throat> there are no strongholds out there. You know, there's no castles mm -hmm. that we have to take or... You know, that kind of stuff. There's none of that. There's the way that, you know, we would think that that's talking about, you know. There are strongholds out there and, you know, the enemies in there and we've got to pull down those strongholds. The only strongholds are in us. And yeah, it's, there's an enemy there and he's got strongholds. But um, the goal is not out there. The goal is in here. That's where he wants them pulled down, okay? And, uh, and, and it's like, pull them down. Pull them down. Well, you, you have to be mighty through God to pull them down. But that does say that, mighty through God to the pulling down. Okay. It doesn't say m that God is doing it. It says you're mighty through God to pull down those, those strongholds. Okay, what are the strongholds? The stronghold isn't, <clears throat> um, well, let's just say the stronghold is the self-exalted mind that feels like, you know, I shouldn't be dealing with this or I shouldn't be under bondage or I shouldn't have to, <clears throat> you know, whatever it is. Uh, it's an imagination that is wrestling with the situation and calling the enemy not me. Mm -hmm. The enemy is not me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, <clears throat> and in doing so, you exalt yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you exalt yourself, what are you doing immediately? You're exalting yourself against the knowledge of God. Because mm -hmm. the knowledge of God is Christ crucified, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and the mind of God is Christ crucified. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> so that exaltation, you know, and the exaltation it just says, well, you know, I don't know, because I think that's what, I, I really think that's what Judah did. I don't think, I don't know if I want to go into captivity. Jeremiah is saying that it's okay, <laughs> that God's actually in this, but I don't know if I want to go that direction. You know, I, I really... I have so much to offer, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, I, and the difference that I could make, you know, just as a good Christian. 
<laughs> Sorry. Um, all the while exalting yourself yeah. against the knowledge of God, the knowledge of the Lamb. And um, <clears throat> so, so then he's saying, the next part of that is bringing into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So <clears throat> what thoughts are, is he talking about? Well, we would go every thought, but you can, it, it can be every thought if that's our mindset. Or it is simply um, summed up in every high thing that exalteth itself. Then that's deal with everything. <laughs> now we're gonna now we can deal with everything, you know, that yeah. we think and whatever, and and of course that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ, bringing every thought. See, so that means that there's the strongholds are in our mind in relationship to self exaltation, um, <clears throat> and the bringing into captivity. Every thought is to the obedience of Christ. Philippians 2. It doesn't say the obedience to Christ. It says of. Mm -hmm. It's the obedience of Christ in you, us. Lord. Yeah, because, you know, that's right. Because that, what is that? What is that saying? It's him, huh? Yeah, and and that whatever obedience I have, you know, you, you could say it like this: I'm really not good at obedience, <laughs> right? I'm not that good. I'm not that good at obedience. So thank you, thank you, Jesus. You know, that this thing is found in Him, being in me, and me exalting Him, and that pulls down these strongholds. <clears throat> Um, also, this is the first time I'm going to actually read something I had down here other than the scripture now. <clears throat> this obedience is not to the Lord Jesus in heaven. Obviously. Uh, but it is the obedience of Christ, his obedience. So I wrote, but come to the life of Christ in you. Lord. See, yeah. and that's, you know, I believe, I believe that the main thing that God is at work trying to do has nothing to do with the earth except as he can deal with us. Now, okay, think about Noah. I mean, he didn't change the world. Mm -hmm. He's trying to get something out of us. You know, and that something is his son. Wow. <clears throat> so, uh, usually when the subject of obedience comes up to us, the subject of Christ doesn't. We're always separate. We're always separate. There's me, and I need to be obedient to Christ. And so we literally read that scripture. We read into all scriptures what it is not saying. Mm. Using this as an example, it is the obedience of Christ, not to Christ. Mm -hmm. And I, I still hear it all the time. I, I've heard it in our church recently, you know, and a, a lot of talk, you know, to the congregation about, well, you know, it gets down to obedience. Well, no, it doesn't. It gets down to the fact that we're not obedient and we need to right. fess up and, and, um, and realize that we have weapons that are mighty through God to cast that down mm -hmm. because we still think, uh, you know, no one would say uh, obedience to Christ unless they thought they could do it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's... That's sad. That's so sad. I mean, the whole point of the law was to show you you can't do it. What's the alternative? 
well, now that I'm a Christian, I can do it. No, now you're a Christian, it's Christ. You know, and to me, those lines are very separate, very separate. <clears throat> um, and then I've got Philippians 4, 7 here. <clears throat> and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Well, you got a lot there. You got the peace of God, not your peace. You've got it passing all understanding, which means that it is, because it says it's going to keep your heart, not your mind. It passes understanding, you know, and there is this place, you know, I, and I think I emphasize it a lot, but I don't know that everybody really fully catches it. But I really don't talk a lot about understanding and knowledge in the sense that most people would think that it did because I talk about the heart. <clears throat> and this is basically saying bypass the understanding and let's go to the heart. Want, want me to read it? Want me to read it again? And the, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through him. It passes all understanding. Praise God. And then it keeps your heart and your wow. minds Thank you, Lord. through him. Wow. Is that really them? Yeah. Okay, then I'm really done.